Hi, I'm Matt Hill. I'm the curriculum designer here at MRU, and I'm doing these walkthrough slides like I usually do for our lesson plans. This is our new sort of revamped unit plan on supply and demand. So we start day one, uh, all about the law of demand. So all about just getting understand uh, students to understand that relationship between price and quantity. Higher prices, people are going to buy less. Lower prices, people are going to buy more. It's very intuitive, um, but you know you still got to you know do a day on it. Really, you know, making sure it's you know in students' mind. And so we start this one by asking students. This is a real story where a gas station had priced their gas wrong. There was some mistake and they priced it at 70 cents. And so just start a class discussion. This is a bell ring or start a class discussion about what they would do. I've done this in my class many times. You know, and students are all, oh, yeah, you know, fill my tank up, but then ask, all right, would you, you know, tell your friends? Would you tell your relatives? Would you bring another car by? And, you know, if, if they don't drive, ask them what their parents would do. So, you know, again, this, I think is the cleanest example of, you know, price goes down, people are going to want to buy uh, more. And here we have some quotes to that effect from the article. All right, then we're going to move into sort of our first um, activity, uh, which is getting the students to fill out their own demand schedule. So they got to think of an item, um, you know, item that they want, an item that they buy. If it was mispriced all the way down to 70 cents, um, you know, how much would they buy? And you got to say, all right, you can't resell the item. The item can't be gift cards. You know, you want a clean answer as to, all right, if you had to use these yourselves, how much would you buy if it was this lower price? Then you want to say, okay, if it was 50% off, how much would you buy? If it was full price, how much would you buy? Just to reference the student activity sheet, you're basically filling in this table, which is just a simple demand schedule that should show at a lower price, they want to buy more, at a higher price or the, the, the full price, they would buy you know less. Okay. So you're just trying to set it up for themselves and then get some discussion questions going to again, start to hammer on this relationship. When prices go down, do you think people will buy more, people will buy less? What do you think the law of demand is? You know, before we actually tell you what the law of demand is, what do you think we're getting at here? Then we have a video all about the demand curve that you know sort of goes through this um, in depth. And I would encourage you to watch and play it, pausing at certain points. Again, we like to do this where we pause at certain points just to check in because you know students can tune out during a video. So pausing at certain points to just check understanding, kind of break things up. Okay. Um, so here again, pause again at 105. And then we have the answers there on the slides for you. You can adjust these slides however you like. So, you know, again, everything's on Google. So you make a copy of it and then you have it for your own stuff and then you can just mess around with it however you like. These are the master copies, but you just make a copy of it and you mess around it. So if you don't want the solutions in here, if you want to talk through them, uh, you can get rid of the slide, but we have the solutions there right on there. Um, if you'd like now we developed a interactive for this day that is already really popular and what it is is you know you just practice graphing a demand curve so one of the you know difficulties we have in these unit you know, plans we're providing the google, google docs with that functionality you know ideally we'd want to have more uh graphing um uh but it's just difficult to do that you know in the context of a google doc and not knowing exactly you know, how students are filling this out. Can they graph? Can they just type in answers? So we sort of leave it up to you. Like if you want to do more graphing, you can do more graphing uh, in the lessons. But what we can do is we can, we can do simple interactives where the students can practice graphing. Okay, so they have to label it uh, correctly and then they have to put these points on the graph. So we got what, 550, 20 and 25 and 55 and five, all right. There we go. And then there's a whole other one. But again, this is just for them to practice graphing these uh, these demand curves. And you do that in the middle of the video after it's introduced, what a demand curve looks like. All right. And so that's basically, you know, the meat of it. You know, it seems short, but, you know, with the discussions, with the videos, with them doing the interactive and you making sure they're doing a good job on the interactive, you know, it, it, it will uh, fill the time. And what we're doing here at the end is... Going back to that initial demand schedule that they built out and starting to get them to think about why were they willing to pay whatever they're willing to pay for the good. You know, we go back up here, you know, say they put 
jeans was the thing that they would buy if it was 70 cents. All right. And then at full, at full price, they would buy one pair of jeans. All right. So they're basically saying they value that those jeans at that dollar amount. What, where does that value of the jeans come from? Like where, you know, why do you value certain goods at certain prices? Like, why do you think this is a good deal or that's not a good deal? What we are gesturing at is day two, which is things that will shift the demand curve. So here we have the things that move a demand curve in a nice uh, acronym. Taste, price-related goods, income, number of buyers, expectations about the future. Uh, probably no one would put expectations as the thing that, you know, where it informed their value. But, um, you know, these are just general things that are going to move um, the demand curve. And so we're sort of gesturing to it or introducing it here before we get into it in depth in day two. And then we got an exit ticket just to see if they understand this basic, basic relationship between price and quantity as represented by the demand curve. Get our supply, demand, and equilibrium unit plan here, or click for the next video.